Hey everybody, um, now it's time to jump into the Wayback Machine, set it to about a half hour, 40 minutes ago, and uh, see just exactly how we got into that situation in Luna, in the Domain of the Moon Priestess. So let's go. Okay, here we are. Um, we have just now set up a um, the beginnings of a two-player game with uh, everything randomized. Uh, of these four uh, starting tiles, they're like these big gigantic tiles. Oops, sorry little fella. Two of them were randomly chosen to be face down, and two of them are randomly put down face up. And you know, in, in a three-player game, three would be face up, in a four-player game, all of them would be, you know, so there's basically more room in the temple. But in a two-player game, these are all the slots that are available. And I am on, uh, as player one, I'm on spot number one, and Jen is on the next highest, spot number three. We also have our little books that will protect us, and we'll see how that plays out later. Um, also, randomly, all these uh, islands have been put out, and you know, when you're uh, the game actually comes with like some basic step instructions for like a first play, where it tells you where to put guys like the master worker, where the red player places their workers and stuff. And this is island number seven. You put you know sequentially, clockwise around the table. But um, we're actually playing the full game where everything's randomized, and players are actually going to set up their own starting situation. So all the islands have been placed randomly around the board. The apostate, the evil heretic, who, um, is, who is a bad guy and loses points for us, is over here on the Builder's Island. The Priestess is over here on the Ship Island. And the worker, oh, the, ma the uh, Master Builder is over here on the Tomes of Knowledge Book Island. Alrighty, so that's a random st setting. And first thing I'm going to do, first thing each player gets to do, is place one temple. Um, which normally it's expensive to build these, but we get to put one out for free. And for starters, I'm going to put mine... Boom, as first player on the Moon Priestess Island, or, well, it's the ship island, but this is where the Moon Priestess is at the moment. I'm going to actually try to curry her favor by having a temple in that area, and we'll see how well that works out. Jen, meanwhile, she is going to place um, a temple. Well, there's one place, in a two-player game, she unfortunately cannot place it on the Herb Island. That's where she'd like to place it, but she's not going to place it there. So I think instead, she will place it on... Um, yeah, she's going to place it on oh, that's kind of the uh, yeah, the Namasa. Um, so that's her spot. And now we take turns placing our workers. We start with um, four sets of two. And so I will say my first set, I can't place it on an island where I've already placed other stuff. So I have to put it elsewhere. I will put an island on the herb island. Jen will put one on, let's see, uh, put one over here on the book island, and then I will put one, let's see, um, I think I'll put one over here on the wave island, and now Jen will put one on the, ooh, she put it on the builder's island, that'd be kind of tricky. See, if she want to do that, she could lose points. But because the apostate's there, but she does want to be able to build, so that's tricky. Yeah, but she's going to put a set there. We'll see how that works out for. Her. See my next set. I will place them. Oh, what the hey? I guess I'll put it over here on this uh, apostate island. And now Jen will put a set here with the moon priestess which means she's now pulled into the lead. She's got more of a presence on this island than I do. And now for my last set, uh, da, da, da. see, I want to get some books. Already on the waves, already there. I'm not going to go there. What the heck? I'll come over here and be on the mining island. Let's see. Oh, or have I got one too many? One, two, three. Nope, that's it. All right. And so now Jen's got one more set. Her final set, one, two. And she will go. Uh, yeah, she's going to go. Oh. Yeah, she'll go here. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so we're, we're set. And now we can actually begin the game. Uh, I'm first player, so I will go first. And what we do every turn is uh, we take turns um, doing any one of these eight actions. And those eight actions are use two priests um, on an island to um, grab one of the tiles. So I could like use these two guys. I could activate them to grab the tiles. To, um, I could use two guys to recruit a third guy so we can get more workers onto the game. We can um, build a shrine, which requires two workers and a shrine token, which we don't have yet. Um, 
Let's see. Although, actually, that's pretty handy. Uh, we can also use herbs to wake up guys if they've already worked so they can do more work. We can move our guys around. We have three different ways to move them around in various ways. We can promote them off the little islands up onto the big island where they can earn points for us over the course of the game by doing studies in the, in the main temple. Um, we can move books around and protect ourselves. We can also increase on the Council of Priests, which is a score, uh, you know, generate score for us. Um, and also we can uh, kick the evil apostate out of our island if we don't like him. Um, we can use novices to do actions and we can meditate, which means we pass. I forgot one more thing though. Before we start, there are two islands that I do not have a presence on. I do not have a presence on the book island or the um, building island. So that means I get to, for starters, take a, a, a tile for free. I'm going to take a building tile for free. That is my first tile. Jen gets a tile for free as well. She doesn't have a presence on um, the herb island or also the mining island, but she's going to take an herb for free. So now we actually start. And the first thing I am going to do is I am actually going to build a temple. Um, which you notice down here, uh, as it says, um, you need to use your um, temple tile, which I have. Because I got it for free. Uh, means I place a temple on whatever island the master builder is currently on by activating two of my dudes. So I'm going to use this, which I just picked up. The master builder's over there. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm not. Because I don't have any dudes on that island. So I can't actually build on that island. Um, oh, that was poorly thought out, wasn't it? Let's see, did I actually want to grab that then at the beginning of the game? Since I won't be able to use it for a while. What was the other island I'm on? Oh, I could have grabbed a book instead. Yeah, what the heck, I'm going to grab a book instead. Yeah, there we go. So, sorry about that. Anyway, so first turn, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm not going to build, um, but I think I am going to... I'm going to start worshipping up at the big house, up on the, uh, the, the big island. So, um, I've got two places... No, actually, no, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get myself some ore. Some uh, mining ore, one of these two tiles. So the way I do that, the way I get the priest's favor of whatever island I'm on is I activate my two workers. And now the rules actually say to jump them into the water. And this represents, everybody thinks this means they're swimming around. But what this really means is they're just tuckered out from their work. What we actually do is we don't actually knock them in the water. We just flip them over to indicate that they're used, which is you know kind of handy. Because uh, then you know, it's very, very clear. They've grabbed this tile for me. They've worked together, grabbed this tile, and now they're tuckered out. Now it's Jen's turn. And the first thing she's going to do, she's going to do the same thing. She's going to tucker out these two guys on the building island to grab a building favor tile. Now it's my turn again. Um, let's see. Now, I, where else do I have guys? I've got them over there and over there. Okay, I am going to, um, I could tucker these guys out to get a wave tile, but instead I'm going to have to do something else. I'm going to tucker them out to recruit a new guy. Some, you know, some guy who's on the island has just been recruited to the, the Order of the Moon Priestess. So I've now got an extra worker on the board. Uh, that's another thing, you know, that's recruiting. You, you knock two guys down and you get a, a third guy recruited. So that was my second action. Now Jen's action, she is actually going to build. She's over here on the island with the Master Builder. Um, and she's got her two guys. So she's going to knock her two guys down. One, two. Um, and use her Builder tile that she picked up from these guys to build a temple on this island um, because the master builder's there. So she's basically just scored four points. Every temple is worth four points, but they also have other benefits as well. So that was her turn. Back to me. Back to my turn. I've recruited some guys. I've, uh, you know, I've gotten a uh, nice, let's see, what else do I want to do? I would like to do that. Yeah. I'm going to have these guys. Oh, oh, but I would like to do that. Oh, I want to do everything, but there are only so many things I can do. Okay. I'm going to have, I'm going to have these guys. Yeah. These guys. One, two. Uh, jump down and grab me an herb. Now it's Jen's turn. She's done a build. What else is she going to do? She's still got these guys up and those guys up over there. Now uh, these guys are in an island where she already has a, a temple. The temples are worth four points. They also count towards the majority of the moon priestess. And over here currently, Jen's got two guys on the island. I've got one guy on the island. So um, you know, Jen's in the lead for getting those five points. But the other cool thing the temples do is they make certain actions cheaper. Um, when you're, when you're, when you use two guys, instead of using two guys to do actions on this island, I can use one guy, um, for a couple of the actions. And the actions I can, um, that the temple makes cheaper are, um, go up to the big house, to the big temple, go up here. And what's the other one? Oh, ugh. I should know this. Is that one? Oh, and the other one is grab a towel. So because I've got a, um, this is nice. 
I'm going to, instead of having to knock down two guys to do this action, I only have to knock down one because i got the temple. And the other guy is basically going to um, grab uh, this priest favor. So I've just gotten another ability. Now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, not my, her turn. My turn again. What else have I got? Let's see. I've still got these guys. So I could knock them down to recruit, get another worker. I could knock them down to um, gr grab the last of these um, temporary worker tiles. Or I could um, send them off to the... Uh, to the big to the big house. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put both these guys down. Lay both them down. One, two. But actually, I'm sorry. No, I lay one of them down, and the other one gets sent off. To you'll notice um, this number five tile up at the big uh, temple, and that means he's come up here to study. Um, and he is now, you know, unless he comes back, he's pretty much out of the game. But this has the potential of scoring me points. But all I've done is let's see, what's it called? It's called promotion. I promoted him from the little islands to the big island, which meant I had to um t uh, to drop a guy. To uh, you know, drop a guy, but then that meant I got to send the other guy up here. And now Jen says, "Hey, gosh darn it! I was going to have this guy. She was going, you know, this other guy who was lying, who didn't have to lie down. He was going to get sent up. But I've just blocked this space, so Jen can't get there now. So anyway, it's Jen's turn. What's she going to do? She's got these guys still standing up, um, and she's got this one solo guy standing up. Now, uh, oh, and then she's also got um, a couple. She's got an herb and a worker." So I think what she's going to do is she's going to use this special worker tile that she got previously. And what this guy does is almost every single action in this game takes two workers. But this guy can be the second worker in a two-man group. So what that means is she only has to knock down this one single guy instead of two guys to do the recruit action. Normally you knock down two guys to recruit a guy. But because Jen used this temporary worker, she's only going to knock down a single guy. And she's just gotten another recruit. So, uh, that's nice for her. And now it's my turn again. All my guys um, are off the island. So there's nothing more I can do out there. However, I do have this guy. And so now, uh, he's already been promoted up here. But all that means is he just sits here and does nothing for me. And um, so all I have to do is next, I have to put him through sanctification. Which means we move him in to the big house. And so what that means is, I take him, pick him up. And he, you know, he's on spot number five. So I find spot number five in the big temple. Which is, where is it? I'm blind. Oh, here it is, over here. And um, now that this guy has permanently become a member of the upper class clergy who spends all his days studying and meditating and whatever, I've just scored six points. Because the guard, who is currently on the sixth spot, let him into the temple to become sanctified. So I just made six points. Um, yeah, and let's see. So now it's Jen's turn again. She's still got these two workers. Um... Who she could, you know, she could knock down, or like official rules, jump in the water, but we just always knock them down. Who she could knock down, she, to indicate she's using them, to, she could like, you know, grab one of these boat tiles, or she could recruit somebody, or various things. However, she doesn't want to do that, because if she does, if they're, if they're plumbing and tuckered out, that means at the end of the day, they won't be able to, um, you know, pay tribute to the moon priestess, and suddenly I'll get five points, because these guys don't count towards this area control, area majority thing here. So she is not going to use those guys. Instead, she is going to pass, which means we take this uh, lit candle and we flip it, and now the candle's a little bit lower. And so she has passed. And now it's my turn again. Um, now I could pass as well. All my guys are used up now, but I do have these um, packs. So I think I'm actually going to use my herb token, which means it goes back over on the herb island. And what the herb is, it lets me wake up two guys on one island. And I believe the two guys I will wake up will be um, these two guys on Wave Island. All right, and now it's Jen's turn again. So, and uh, there's nothing else she, again, she could use these guys, but then she'd lose that majority. So she's going to pass. And now it's my turn again. And I could pass, or I've suddenly got two workers who I woke up who could go off and do something. You know, um, I, could, I could flip them over and I could recruit another worker. Um, or I could, um, you know, get myself a Wave Tile. Or I could, hmm, let's see, or I could pass right now, even though I've got these workers. If I pass, I will do the final pass of this uh, round, of this year, and I will get one point. And if I don't pass right now, Jen's going to pass next turn. So this is my last turn anyway. Jen's going to pass, and then she's going to get the one point. So do I want to give her one point 
um, and therefore not use these two guys, um, or do I want to use them? I think I'm going to get her at one point. I'm going to use these guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them again. So I have hired yet another guy. I've got four guys on this island. Uh, very, very busy. And now Jen, again, she could use these guys. She's not doing it for the area control, the area majority. And so she um, has passed and she gets one point. And that is the end of the first year, the first of six years. And so at the end of every year, we, uh, the moon priestess bestows her favor. So we come over to her island and we uh, do area control. I've got one um, active piece of wood, my little temple. Jen's got two, so that means she gets five points and I get two points for coming in second place. So she gets a fiver and I get one, two. Okay, then we go over to wherever the uh, evil apostate is. Oh, and this is bad for Jen. She was not paying attention, or I should say I wasn't paying attention. Um, whenever he's on an island, if you haven't gotten rid of him, oh, which you should have done. Oh, that was so silly of me. But anyway, um, well, it's, it's demonstrating stuff. Jen is now going to lose points. Um, for being on the island with the apostate who whispers into our, our, um, our novice's ears, hey, don't follow the moon priestess. She's bad. This is not good. Um, my guys have been tempted. So I lose, she loses one point or dollar for even being spoken to. And since there's two guys on the island, she loses two more. So she just lost a total of three points. Of, and of, so the six she made, she lost three. Um, so that was not very good. But, um, you know, that's what happens when you... Um, um, let fate, you know, when, when you stick around with the heretic on the island. She should have got, now she could have gotten rid of him, and I kind of forgot about that, but, you know, say love you. She lost three points, but you know what? She gained five points off of there, so it still wasn't the end of the world. And she, and men's, her guys got to stay here so she can use this action next turn as well. Um, and that's it. So that happens at the end of every turn that we deal influence points or, um, you know, uh, lose influence points. Then we wake everybody up, we move the figures, and we restack the time token. So everybody who didn't work, I wake back up, you're, or everybody who worked uh, can get back up to be ready for the next day. So these guys are up, ready to go. These guys are ready to go. These guys are ready to go. Wake up, everybody. It's a brand new year. And the moon priestess would like some attention. So all these guys wake up. The moon priestess, in a two-player game, moves five spaces. One, two, three, four. Oh, oops. One, two, three, four, five. So she's over here now. The master builder always, no matter how many players, moves four spaces. One, two, three, four. And the apostate um, always moves one space. And now this is bad news for me. He's suddenly on an island where I've got four dudes hanging around. If these guys hang around here, I'm going to lose five points. So I definitely don't want that to happen. That would be very, very bad. But anyway, um, let's see. Also, I forgot to mention, Jen um, got that point at the end of the game, or at the end of the first year, which means I hold on to first player. Whoever doesn't get that point in a two-player game becomes first player for the next round. So anyway, here we are. Um, oh, and also, the guard moves off to this space. Now, you remember how the, on the last round, the guard was here, and because I sent a guy into the uh, temple, I scored six points. He's now here. From now on, you only score five points for sending people into the temple. Um, but... It's also opened up more um, places, you know, more tiles that we can, um, you know, send our guys to. So, it's the beginning of a new day, and what are we going to do this time? First of all, my number one concern is I do not want to lose five points. So, what I think I'm going to do, yeah, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to have one of my guys, um, what's it called? It's expulsion. I can spend as many of my guys as I want to move this guy as many spaces as I want. So, I'm going to spend him one to move him over to this island, the same island where the worker is. Um, and Jen says, oh, that's horrible, because I don't have any workers. I have a temple, but the temple cannot be tempted. Um, but now Jen might lose points again if she keeps these guys on this island. But she wants to keep the guys on the island because she wants to build another temple here. So that's kind of tricky for her. So anyway, that was my first move is um, I, um, and again, you know, I could have paid up to four. I could have, you know, paid, could have moved over here. I could have moved over here where Jen's got three workers. Could have sent all of my workers over here and moved them way over there. But you know what? I want to do other stuff with these workers. So that was my move. And now it's Jen's turn. What's she going to do? Now, she's got these guys who are on this island, which is very, very nice because, again, she could win five points. But if she um, puts them to sleep so that she can get a build action, which she wants to do, um, well, that's, that's what she's going to do because she wants to build again. So she's going to do a build. My turn. Or, you know, she's going to set up so she could do a build in the future. And remember, the master builder is over here. Right. Um, let's see. What am I going to do next? I am going to... Oh, could I do that? That'd be nice. Oh, but I would like to do that first. So many things. I mean, this game... 
This game can be very analysis paralysis prone um, because there's just so many options every turn. You really have to think multiple turns ahead. And obviously right now, I am not thinking multiple turns ahead. I'm just kind of playing fast and loose. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. I would like to get over there. I can't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. Um, where would that be? That would be 16 or 16. Oh, that's not very good. 28 and 22. Oh, they're in the future. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I, I uh, see. I don't particularly want to get any more of these uh, nuggets. So I don't particularly want my guys to stay there forever. Um, so I might want to move them off. But to do that, I would need a boat, or I'd have to waste a whole turn moving them. And that's kind of wasteful. Uh, no, I think actually that's what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do, but they're going to do that later. Uh, what the heck? Let's do it now. I'm going to have, um, this is one of the few actions that can be done with only a single guy instead of two guys. I'm going to have, um, one guy, what's it called? Um, I'm going to have one guy activate my Council of Priests. So I just flip him down, and I move my marker one space forward on the Council of Priests. And now this is a tiebreaker for the um, you know, majority of wherever the Priestess is. Um, if there's a tie, the tiebreaker is based on this. So I get tiebreakers now. And also, the more I advance along this, I can start getting to three points and six points and eight points. And so I can get points at the end of the game if I'm farther up here. So I just did that. And now it's Jen's turn again. What's she going to do? Okay, first of all, she's going to use this builder token that she picked up to have these guys build her a temple over here. So there we go. She's got a temple on that island. And now it's my turn again. And what am I going to do? Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. I am going to... <sighs> Yeah, what the heck? I'm just going to have my other guy move up. Now, I could have done both of them at the same time, but I'm just kind of biding my time to watch what Jen is going to do. You know, this is kind of like a stalling tactic. So I moved up again. Now it's Jen's turn again. Now, she wants to get these guys off this island um, before the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the bad guy uh, tempts her. So she's got to get them off, which means um, first thing she wants to do is wake them back up. She's still got an herb she picked up before. She's going to use that to wake them back up. Now it's her turn. And so now she has a chance to get them out of there. And uh, now it's my turn again. Let's see. I am going to... You know what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to keep on moving up. I'm going to have the single guy. Because there's a single guy over here all by himself. There's not much he can do. Because remember, he's the one who sent this guy off. So now he's by himself. There's not much he can do. So he's just going to... Um, move me up, and now I move to where I'm going. There are no points. I'll earn three points at the end of the game for having um, spent these three guys. Uh, let's see. Now it's Jen's turn again. So she'd like to get the boat, but she can't do that. So she is now. She's got these two guys. She's got. Oh, yes, she could. Now uh, she could actually try to make these guys go away, but instead she is going to spend one of them, boink, to move the apostate over here to this island where suddenly, boom, I'm going to get slammed by the darned apostate who's going to make trouble for me. Um, and she shooed him away. Now it's my turn again. Okay, now it is time. Um, let's see, I've got, I've got these guys over here on this island. I'm going to have these two guys, um, you know, take a break to give me a wave, which I'll need very shortly because that's going to save me over there. Um, why is this guy down? Did he do something by himself? I don't think so. I think I just didn't pick him up. No, no. Yes, yeah, yeah, I just didn't pick him up. So, there we go. So, I've got the wave. Jen's turn. Let's see. Now, she's got these two guys over here, um, which, um, because she's got a temple on this island, remember, the temple makes some actions cheaper, um, she is going to spend, uh, she's basically going to use her temple. Normally, she would have to use one guy to send the other guy off to this space, but instead, because she's got the temple, she can just send him without having to use a guy. So, she's come over here to this space number 12 which is um, not, not, not bad. I mean, she's going to potentially score some points. Now it's my turn again. Hmm. Let's see, I'm going, to get, um, I'm going to get another one of these herbs because they're always really great. They can you know, rejuvenate somebody. Um, get out of jail free kind of card. And now it's Jen's turn again. So she's still got one guy here, which I believe she is going to use this single guy to grab a boat tile. Or wait, no, no. What, what can you use a single guy? Yes. Oh, uh, no, the temple um, only lets you... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. the temple, because the temple's there, she can get this tile for only one. So she's knocking the single guy over to get this boat. Boop. 
Um, let's see. Mm, sorry. And now, my turn again. Okay, I got these two guys here. Uh, I would like to. Oh, ah, I can't do that till next turn. That's too bad. I'd like to do that next turn, but I'll do it. I'll do it later. That's fine. Yeah, that'll be nice. Okay, so I'll do that later. Okay, so these two guys, what are they going to do? Um, I could recruit another guy. I can't send them up to the big house because the uh, wave token is way past this guard, so I can't get to this token. So I can't send them up there. They could recruit yet another guy. Um, they could... Let's see. Actually, I think what they're going to do is... Should I do it now? Yes, I think so. I'm going to spend this wave that these two guys earned for me. And what the wave does, it's actually it's a picture of a wave, but the rules clearly state it is a fairy. A fairy means I can move everybody around on the board, whether they're um, standing or not standing, but um, after they're moved, they're all tuckered out from riding the ferry all day. So I can move, the uh, first thing, I'm going to move these guys off this board so I will not get hit by the apostate. Um, the heretic, whatever, whatever his name is. So, and, and now I gotta start thinking, where do I, these guys are gonna be tuckered out wherever they land. So I want them to be in a good place for my next turn. So let's see, if I think about the builder, next turn he's gonna be one, two, three, four. Next turn the builder's gonna be over here. But I've already got a couple guys over here. I, I think I'm gonna keep them over there so that, that I'll have a chance to build, which means maybe, yeah, maybe I want, I'm gonna move these two guys over here. So they ran screaming from the heretic and rode the ferry all the way over to where the moon priestess is. Let's see. Now, does anybody else I want to move around? This one guy by himself, there's not much he can do by himself, so I'm going to move him someplace too. Um, where would I like to move him? Actually, I believe I'll move him over here. Yeah, because that means he'll be over here with um, this temple so that I can get boats on the cheap. So he's over there now. Let's see, I can move these guys, but I don't want to because I want them to stay around so I can keep earning more herbs. And I've already moved those guys, so I, that's it. That was my turn. I used the wave and I shuffled everybody all over the place. Now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see what she got. Um, she has... Yeah, actually, I know what she's going to do. She's going to, um, what's it called, sanctify this guy. So he's on space number 12. He comes in here to space number 12. Um, and she earns... Five points for that. She gets five. And, uh, right, so that's the end of that. And my turn again. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Right, these are my last two guys that are standing. These are the last two guys I can do anything with. Or I could start passing, or I could pass a little bit and see what Jen's going to do. Um, but I think I will... Oh, no, forget, I've got my other actions, too. I could wake two guys up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this herb to wake two guys up. And now, unfortunately, I can't wake up the guys on the herb island because that would be an infinite loop. I could, you know, put them to sleep get, to get the herb and then wake them back up with the herb. So I can't wake them up. I'm going to wake up these two guys, which all of a sudden means I've now got two guys who are awake who will be able to worship the moon priestess at the end of the turn and score me points. And Jen's got nobody there. So she's like, err, that's not good. Let's see. Now it's Jen's turn. Um, so now what she was planning to do is she was planning to use this boat to move these guys over here who are awake over to this island so that she could score the five points. Um, but that would mean if she moved those guys over here, we'd be tied. I'd have two and she'd have two. And the tiebreaker is over here. And remember, I paid to move up, so I would get the tiebreaker. Jen needs to get three guys on this island. And she's only got one boat, so that's not going to happen. So she's going to... But if she doesn't get somebody over here, she will get no points. I'll get five and she won't get two. So I think she is going to use her boat anyway. Um, yeah, she's gonna, uh, but it's kind of expensive. Let's see. But okay, yeah, she's gonna do it anyway. She's gonna use her boat to move two guys over here. And now they're bright eyed and bushy tailed, um, ready to worship the moon priestess, although unfortunately, um, they're, they're gonna be tied and then the tie will be broken. Back to me, back to my turn. I don't wanna put these guys um, asleep because I am in the lead for the priestess's function. These guys um, are still about. So I could use them to get another wave, which I could use to then shuffle guys around again. But I think I'm actually just going to recruit yet another worker. Hello. Hi there. And he's asleep as well. So I got a lot of workers on the board. Now it's Jen's turn. What's she got? She's got two single guys who are by temples. And then she's got these guys. She's not going to use these guys because she's, um, again, tying for that. So with those single guys on the temples, she could do a promotion either to the book one um, which you can't get to, or, yeah, no, she can't do a promotion. Um, what's the other thing the temple allows you to do? Oh, priest's favor, right. Okay, so, 
Oh, that's kind of nice. She's going to use the single guy to get a token. Remember, normally you need to use doubles, but because of the temple, she can use a single guy, and she's got um, a new um, extra worker for free. My turn again. I'm not putting these guys to sleep. There's nothing else I can do. Um, so I'm going to pass. Jen's turn again. Uh, she's still got one more worker, and she's got this bonus worker. So, uh, does she want to do that? I think so. I think she will actually um, use this single guy to grab a book token. And now it's my turn again, so I have to pass again. And now it's Jen's turn. She's not going to put these guys down. She's going to do the final pass, and when you know, she timed it perfectly, so she gets one point. Boom. Although that means, again, I'll hold on to first player. And now is the end again. And so now we uh, do scoring, um, as per usual. Coming over to the, uh, qu the queen, or I'm sorry, not the queen, the uh, princess, the moon priestess. Um, I've got two, Jen's got two. I tie break, so I get five and Jen gets two. I score five points. Jen scores uh, one, two points. Okay, uh, Jen scores two points. I score five points. And um, is anybody on the say? Nope. Everybody got the heck away from this guy or shunned him away. So he's off by himself. So he will not whisper in anybody's ear. Now, um, I forgot. There's one other important um, point scoring mechanism in the game, which is everybody who's diligently working away in the central temple earns you points at the end of every year. Um, now, uh, last, so I forgot to do this last turn, so let's go back to last turn. Last turn, I had actually gotten two guys. I had my starter guy, and I'd gotten one other guy in. So I earned two points at the end of the first year. And I'll earn two points at the end of this year as well. Totally forgot about that. How silly of me. Jen, at the end of the first year, only earned one point, because she only had one worker in the uh, temple. But now she's got two as well, so she earns two. So actually, that's a total of three she earned. And now that's the end of year number two. And so, as always, we get everybody back up so they're ready to work for the next year. Do, do, do. Wake up, everybody. Wake up. Oh, so many people on this island. Five. All right, so everybody wakes up. The moon priestess moves on. One, two, three, four, five. Over to an island that Jen's looking, sitting pretty on. The builder moves. One, two, three, four. Onto an island that I'm sitting pretty on. And the apostate moves on one to an island that Jen is not particularly happy to see him, unfortunately. And there we go. And so, oh, and of course the guard moves on. So now moving to the big house only scores you four points instead of five. But again, there's several more tiles that we can have access to. And that's the end of that turn. And now, um, I think that, uh, you know, kind of gives you uh, enough of a big idea. You know, as the game's going to continue, um, you know, it gets cheaper and, you know, it, it scores less and less points to actually move guys into the big house. Um, but, you know, that's understandable because if you, if we put, you know, this guy I put in on the first turn, he's never going to do anything for me for the rest of the game. He only scored points once, so it's a worker who is out. Um, but, you know, as, as the game goes on, we definitely want to get more and more workers in here because the more workers we have in here, the more points we earn every turn. And there's also the chance to um, muscle guys out, which you saw in the opening video. Um, you know, so there's potential to muscle them out. And there's like a lot of uh, you know area control that goes on in narrow area, and no, it's total area control. Um, let's see what else is happening. You know, we're always trying to think ahead for where's the builder going to be because every time we can build, um, you know, we can score four points and we can get more power on those islands. And he always jumps four. Um, we always have to pay attention to where the moon priestess is going to be because we're trying to set up a future um, turn for area control. And um, you know, and you know. Also, um, you know, trying to be smart about when to use our little, um, you know, tokens that we've uh, saved up, all to the big beginning of the game. And at the end of the game, like I said, you get four points for each shrine. Um, you get one point for every token you haven't used, and um, you get however many points you get for having made it up on the um, temple. So um, that pretty much, yeah, I think that probably gives you enough of an idea of most of the mechanics in the loop. There's a lot. I maybe have missed a few things here or there, but hopefully you have an idea of, of how it plays, uh, how deep it is, how much there's to think about. And now if you'd like, you can stick around and see my final thoughts. Or if you skip straight to this video and didn't watch the opening, you might want to see what happens on the next turn. Or maybe if you've forgotten, you can um, hit this button and go back to the intro video and see what happens on the next turn of the game. But either way, um, skip to the end or go watch the next turn in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bye-bye.